So, find yourself lying down on your back, legs long out in front, or if you prefer, you can bend them up and drop your knees together. If you've got grouchy low back, this is probably a nicer place to be. If you feel kind of comfortable, you can lengthen your legs out long. Hands gonna come down by your side, and we're just gonna take the first sort of 10 seconds, or sorry, the first 10 breaths, just to relax. And this breath work really sets the foundation for everything. You wanna be trying to breathe something like this in your day-to-day -day life. So as you lie down, just place your hands on the back of your neck, pick the back of your head up, and just try to lengthen your neck, and then place it back down to the floor. Hands come down by your sides. Feel the breath on the back of the nose. Begin to breathe in and out through your nose. So as you breathe in through your nostrils, you're gonna to try to breathe in for a count of four, three, two, one. And then you're gonna exhale for a count of six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling for four. Exhale for six. Inhaling for four. Exhaling for six. Inhaling four. Exhaling for six. Inhaling for four. Exhaling for six. We're gonna do one more breath. So this simple inhale of four and exhale of six is really the basis of all of our breath work. This grounds us, it slows us, it sh shifts our nervous system into a place of rest and digest. Slowly begin to draw those arms up over your head, lengthen them back behind you, bring the feet together and point everything away from the midline as much as possible. So reach the arms away, reach the toes away. Feel the abdomen lengthen, then draw the knees up towards your belly. We're gonna start with something that's called Parman Muktasana, or wind releasing pose. So depending on how good you've been today, you might find this is one to release some wind, you might not. And then you're just gonna roll yourself around, massage your spine out. Go both directions. And we're going to just begin to, as we come back to the centre, let the right, sorry, the left leg go long down to the floor. Pull the right knee into the chest, lift your shoulders off the floor, chin to chest, nose to knee. Squeeze your knee in towards your belly, giving it a tight hug and a squeeze for three, two, one. Relaxing back down, pull that left knee in again, give both of them a hug and give both of them a squeeze. And again, lift the shoulders, push the knees into the hands, pull the hands into the knees. Exhale, pull both knees into the chest and release that tension. Straighten the right leg out in front, push your hands into your knee, your knee into the hands, left leg and knee, push, 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 pull as you inhale. Exhale, relax and pull that knee in. Give the right leg another hug. So two or three options here, depending on how you want to do We're gonna take happy baby. So you can either take index finger, middle finger around your big toe, or you can get hold of the feet, inside or out, or if that's too much of a struggle, or you just can't really be asked, put your hands behind your knees. And all we're gonna to begin to do is just roll forwards and backwards. So all we're gonna do is just massage our spine out. Now this might seem silly, it might seem trivial, it might seem like there's not a lot going on, but this is literally how I begin all of my practices every day. I practice this little massage of the sponge, rolling backwards and forwards, 
It's a really simple, reflexive movement that children learn at a young age and most of us then forget. So just give yourself a little roll forward and backwards. And then as we roll up this time, we're just going to place our feet to the floor. So release the fingers, roll up and place your feet to the floor. So now we're here. Reach both arms as far forward as you feel comfortable doing. And then we're going to roll back. We're going to roll all the way down onto the back. And then we're going to roll back up again. We're going to plant the feet and reach the arms forward. Roll ourselves back. Roll ourselves forward. Roll ourselves back. Final time, roll ourselves forward. Beautiful. And as we come forward, we're then just going to let the feet come together and drop the knees out to the side. Bouncing those knees around a little bit. Just give them a bit of a swell and a shake. Now, again, maybe that was an easy thing to do, rolling backwards and forwards. Maybe it wasn't. But either way, return your breath to the in for four and out for six. If that's really easy, you can go five and seven. 7 and 9, 12 and 14, just lengthen your breath to whatever breath count feels suitable to you and that doesn't feel like it's too stressful. Inhale, next breath, roll yourself up, bring your feet back to that kind of position where they were, hands behind the back, fingers facing forward or back, your choice. Lift the hips up to the best of your ability, squeeze your bum cheeks on, chin to chest. And then exhale, sweep your bum down between your hands, lengthen the legs and bounce your knees out, round your spine deliberately. Don't try to keep a long spine at this point, just flex the whole spine. Roll back onto your tailbone, onto your bum cheek, so you're not leaning forward, you're actually rolling backwards, but your head tries to drop to your thighs. Inhale, reach those arms up. And then exhale, bring the hands down by your hips and we're going to try to slide the bum forward, lift back up in towards that tabletop. And then again, slide back down, drop yourself over those legs again. And then inhale, lift your way back up. So as you lift your way back up, slide your right foot in towards you. As that right foot comes in, pull the toes up, grab hold of your right foot with your left hand, right hand to right knee, close the knee gap, so you're just going to drop that, and pull the toes up towards your nose, up towards your knee. Now begin to just move your hip around. So what you don't really want to be doing is this, because this is just moving the, the lower leg. This is actually trying to get into the hip socket, so move that whole hip socket around. Try to keep the thigh, the back of the thigh and the calf muscle kind of closed together. And go both directions, exploring there, but keeping that breath soft and slow, simple and long. <clears throat> now this next bit might sometimes seem a bit weird, but you're going to try to bring the leg up and your right hand is going to try and get hold under your right foot. Your left hand might need to come out beside you. And now we get to do an internal rotation of that leg. It looks super funky, looks real weird. It's actually much easier than it, you would think it is as long as you've got this left hand down to support. And then again, I'm gonna spin around again just because it's for this next bit. You're gonna pull that leg back up, left hand grabs hold of right foot again. Right hand comes down diagonally to the side. You're gonna roll out onto your right bum cheek. If, <laughs> knowing you lot, you do a lot of hit stuff, a lot of running, whatever else, your bum cheeks might be pretty tight. You might have some pretty juicy little knots in there. Roll around. If you don't have it this side, you probably got it the other. So roll about, find that knotty, uncomfortable bit, then breathe. So find it, move away from it by half a millimetre, half an inch, take a breath in, and then exhale, dive back in slowly, good. And then again, roll off it, again inhaling, and then again, slowly dive back in, cool. Rise yourself back up, grab hold of your right knee, this bit, 
normally in a class, this is for my amusement to watch people struggle. Uh, I obviously can't see, but hopefully you should still have a laugh with it. Lift your left foot off the floor. This first half of it is relatively easy. You're gonna push your elbows wide, I'm gonna spin again so you can see my elbows, they go wide. And then you're gonna push your knee as far away from you as you can, keeping left foot lifted. And you're gonna slowly, one vertebra at a time, don't let the upper back touch, roll down on towards your back. Left foot drops, right leg goes straight, push the heel towards the sky to the best of your ability. Your leg never has to be straight. If it's here, awesome. Just push the heel away. If it's here, wonderful, it makes no difference. Lift your left foot off the floor, pull your right knee in. This is the fun bit, for me anyway. Push your knee away, push into the hands, elbows go wide, just roll yourself up to a nice comfortable seated position, straightening both legs out. Hopefully you manage that without too much rocking and rolling and momentum. Hands come behind the back, slide your bum, your hand, sorry, your feet in, lift your bum cheeks up, and then bum comes back down, straighten those legs out. Pull your left knee in towards your chest. We do the same hip crank thing. So pull, left toes up, right hand to underside of left foot, left knee out to the side. And again, none of this, like your, your shin is supposed to kind of roll a little bit on top of the um, thigh bone, but that's not what we're after. We want to get into the hip socket, get that hip mobile. So just explore left and right. Try to keep the right leg relatively active because it will stop you kind of flapping around so much. And then once you've been, been both directions, find the left hand under left foot. Right hand comes out as a little post, a little stabiliser beside you. And then begin to roll to the inside, internal rotation of that left leg. Again, it's going to spin just to make life easy. We're going to come back through centre, left hand comes off, right hand to the left foot, left hand behind, down behind your back, roll into that left buttock and feel maybe, this side for me, less juicy, less exciting, less discomfort, less grouchy. So maybe this side's worse for you. Just gently roll your bum around. Find what you need to. My teacher has called this one the all or nothing. You'll either feel absolutely nothing or it'll feel like someone is stabbing you in the buttock. Cool. And so then we're gonna roll our way back up as we come up. We're gonna grab hold of that left, uh, knee again. So lift the right foot off the floor, elbows go wide, roll yourself slowly down. From here we lengthen left leg, right foot can touch the floor and again pick your place, it never has to be straight, it never has to be vertical, you're just working to a place that you can feel like you're pushing your heel away. And over time maybe you can lift your chest, maybe you can take the hands off, See what you feel. We're not really trying to get the core too fired up today, so don't worry so much. Right foot is hovering off the floor now. Left uh, knee into the, into the palms of the hand. Push that knee away, and you just gently, slowly, slowly glide yourself up. We're gonna take those legs long and give them a bounce. From here, draw your knees in. We're gonna take child's pose. So for child's pose, we're gonna find, again, depending on how your knees feel, I don't know, I've never met a whole bunch of you, so I'm not entirely sure what injuries and stuff we have, but maybe child's pose might be with your knees quite wide, maybe your knees will be together, maybe sitting right back like this is uncomfortable, in which case, stay up here. Most of you should be at home, I hope, so you could always put pillows under knees if need be. We're gonna move into our downward facing dog. So we're not gonna be doing many of these at all today. Maybe on Friday morning I'll harass you with them a bit more, but for now, not so much. Push your hands into the floor. Push down into the feet. 
lift your bum cheeks up. So imagine you're making a little inverted V shape. Now the biggest problem most people have is they try to straighten their legs and they end up in this kind of shape here. Rather than this, put a bend in the knees and imagine someone's hooked uh, a towel or a, a dressing gown strap around your hips and just pulled your bum up towards the sky to lengthen your spine. And try to work that, keep the knees bent instead. Pedal and shake your hips around. Finagle yourself into those corners of your hips and your spine and wherever else you may begin to feel some kind of discomfort or some kind of tension. Lifting that right leg up towards the sky, they call this three-legged dog, obviously because it looks like a three-legged version of the downward facing dog. From there, bend your right knee, that's the one in the sky. Try to kick your left bum cheek and just open your hip, imagining that you're like a boy dog peeing on a fence. So you're just opening that hip and then we're gonna close it by pulling that right knee all the way through to our right wrist. So it comes down towards the front. Put, drop your left knee to the floor by your right foot and sit down onto your bum. So quite often, this is called uh, like a 90-90 a like mobility pose. I think in yoga we call it stag or deer pose. So the, left, the right thigh is kind of parallel with the side mount. The right shin is parallel with the front. Uh, left thigh is parallel with the front and left shin parallel with the left side. So from here, we're gonna turn ourselves all the way towards the right, over our right hip. And then we're gonna exhale, and we're just gonna fold our way down to somewhat of a degree. And then inhale, lift our way back up. Exhale, slowly folding down. And then inhale, lifting back up. One more time, slowly folding down. Inhale, lifting back up, cool. So this next bit's pretty weird and funky, feels a bit uh, awkward, but it's a nice one all the same. Your left hand lifts off the floor and you try to thread it under your right arm. You're gonna feel like you go nowhere, but we're just trying to find that counter twist through the spine. Inhale, lift that arm up towards the sky. As it comes up, bring both feet, both knees up, and we're just gonna lift through the hips again. Drop your bum straight back down to the floor and drop the legs straight back into that 90-90 shape. Left hand goes towards the floor, right hand comes under your left arm. That should feel much easier. You roll down on towards your spine. So you're gonna be across your yoga mat now. Pull your knees up in towards your chest. Don't try to change to be straight in the mat because we're gonna be going back there in two seconds. Just roll yourself up to that same place that we started. Place the feet on the floor, reach the arms forward. And then we're gonna slowly roll ourselves back, lift the legs to this kind of 90 degree shape and drop them back to the floor in exactly the same way that they were. Inhale, lift that right hand out and sit tall. So now we're hopefully here. I'm just giving myself cramp. So if you get cramp in your hip, don't worry, I do too. So from this point, we're gonna lean out. You might need fingertips on the ground support, you might not. So lean out over your right front thigh, and your right buttock should maybe get a little bit jazzy. It should feel a bit excited, a bit like it's having to do a whole bunch of work. Inhale, lift yourself up. We're gonna do that two more times. Remember, fingertips can be down to support if need be. One more time coming up. One more time, coming down, beautiful. Inhale, roll yourself back up. Sweeping your left foot around, we're gonna try to bring our left foot to the outside edge of that right, of that mat, of the right side of the mat, sorry, getting confused. Right foot back behind you, pull that left foot all the way in towards your, top, uh, in towards your pelvis, and then we lift our way 
straight up into three-legged dog. So you'll remember that maybe, hopefully, this is how we started last time. Bend that left hip, open that hip up to the sky. Again, imagine you're that boy dog peeing on a fence. And then pull that left knee through to tap your left wrist. Drop towards your bum, find your right knee by your right, sorry, by your left foot. If you wanted to make it slightly bigger into 99, you can. If you want to keep them tucked in a bit, you can. So again, from here we turn to face towards the left, over our left hip, over our left thigh, and we fold ourselves down. Three times, we lift back up. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold down. And then as we come back up, we lift that right hand up towards the sky. We thread it under the left. Again, this is that awkward side. Doesn't really feel like we go anywhere. And then as we inhale, we lift back up. As we lift up, reach that hand towards the sky. Imagine you're grabbing a rope. As those knees come through towards the center, we lift those hips back up to the sky, and then we drop ourselves back down into that 90-90 leg shape. Right hand comes to the floor, left arm under right, roll down on towards the back. Cool, draw those knees in. Same as last time, rolling up, Plant the feet, reach your arms out. Doesn't matter how far you go. Roll back down, same as we did last time. Legs to 90, 90, drop them to the floor. Right hand by your left shoulder to help you lift up. And we're here, we fold out over the left thigh, maybe fingertips, maybe not. Come back up two more times, folding forward. Coming back up. Final time, cool. Rising back up, sweep that right leg through. Bring soles of the feet together this time and then bounce yourself out. Cool. Final little bit, we're gonna come up, we're gonna spread the legs into a straddle pose. Now, for those of you who maybe know me or not, so I probably whinged about this every Monday and Friday to, to, when Joe used to come to class, but um, I hate this pose. Like, I am horrendous at doing these straddle leg poses. Um, basically, everyone who I went to school, yoga school with back in India like five years ago, um, they can all pretty much pancake themselves flat. I can't. Not important, guys. All you're gonna do instead is you're gonna bend your knees and you're gonna push your heels into the floor. So it's gonna feel like, don't do this because it'll hurt your heels, but you're gonna push down, pull back. It should pull your pelvis forward so you get onto your sit bones. Fold yourself forward over your legs. Inhale, sit tall. And as you do, maybe you can creep those heels just a little bit further forward. Push down, pull back. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, lift up. Final time, heels go a bit further, push down, pull back, folding down. You. Inhale, come and sit tall. And sweep your legs around. We're gonna finish as we started. Grab hold of your big toes, lift those knees. So, we're gonna roll down to the back. If you're just watching this for a second, it might be worth watching. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna roll back, keep watching, and then you're gonna roll up, and you're gonna try and catch yourself on your bum cheeks. And then you're gonna roll back, and then you're gonna try and catch yourself on your bum cheeks. And then eventually what you'll do is you'll roll back and you'll straighten the legs, and then you'll try and roll forward and catch yourself with straight legs. This is a brilliant one. If you've got kids playing, perfect one for them. So again, you're gonna slowly roll back, Slowly roll up and catch yourself. There's a nice, silly little move. You'll struggle to get up or you'll over egg it and you'll fall down. And then once you're done, you're gonna to roll to your back. Massage your spine around. And then exactly like we started in that happy baby, you just roll left and right. 
Try not to roll up onto your neck. Just try to stay on your spine, on your back, on your uh, low back, on your shoulders. And then let those legs go long out in front. Let them hang all the way down. So normally if you ever come to my class, then you would normally get a massage at the end, but obviously we can't do that. So I'm gonna come forward and try to explain how you can almost give yourself a little head and neck massage. So can you still see there? Ish. So all you're gonna to try to do is you're gonna place your hands behind your neck and you're just gonna to begin to lift your head and just draw your spine as long as you can and place the head down. Bring your hands onto your neck, onto the shoulders and just begin to squeeze them around a little bit, roll them around, rub your, the, uh, balls of the hands into your neck a little bit, up through what we call kind of your sternocardiomastoid, your scalenes, and all these tissues and blood muscles which join up into your skull. Try to put your fingers or your thumbs gently into the back behind your ears and just give them a little roll and a shake. Imagine you're scrunching your hair a little bit if you don't mind messing it up. If you do, then obviously just avoid that bit. <laughs> Find your thumb and rub it from, um, I don't know what that bit's called, I'm gonna call it the frenulum of the ear, but it's not, I can't remember, something to get it tattooed. So imagine you're running, rubbing your thumb from there, down around the back of the ear, all the way down to those shoulders which you started on and give them a little squeeze again. Come back up to the ear, roll through and round over that kind of mastoid area of the, of the uh, back of the head and again squeeze the shoulders again one more time just place all four fingers onto your forehead and just massage your forehead around massage the hairline it's always a nice relaxing place and all the time you're doing this try to breathe in for a count of four breathe out for a count of six and then relax your hands down by your side when you're done. While it's not quite the same as somebody else massaging you, still, it, it should feel pretty nice. So just taking a few breaths there, breathing in for a count of four-ish, maybe five, breathing out for a count of six-ish. Just close the eyes if you can, if you haven't got children jumping on you. Um, normally, you might well see my dogs jumping on me, I can still focus and breathe. I still just use that as a distraction to work with. So in for four, out for six. Scan your body, crown of the head to the tips of your toes. And every single area, your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth, your teeth and your tongue, your temples, let it all relax. Deliberately tell yourself to let it go. Maybe even just blow a little <sighs> type feeling through the lips, letting all of the tension go. Through the neck, through the shoulders, through your co <coughs> excuse me, collarbones and sternum, shoulders, elbows, wrists and fingers, your spine and your pelvis, the hips, the knees, the ankles, the feet and the toes. Just relax each bit as you go. And then just take three more breaths there. Relaxing down, letting go. Just feeling the whole body. And then in your own time, begin to wriggle the fingers and wriggle the toes. Wriggle the soles of the feet and the palms of the hands. Draw the arms up over your head into a big morning yawning stretch. If you didn't know, that's called pandiculation. There you go, useless fact for you today. Take your big pandiculation, whatever it might be, yawn and stretch out and then grab your knees and pull them up in towards your chest. Rolling your way up to a nice comfortable seated position. 
sit nice and tall, crown lifting up. And so I always close my class out with the same little words, the same little mantras, um, which we'll go through now. So just find the hands coming in prayer or just rest them down your knees, whatever works best for you. As we remind ourselves to have clear and loving thoughts for ourselves, our friends, our fam families or anyone else that we may come across in our day-to-day -day lives. We remind ourselves to have clear and loving and honest communications with our friends, our families, ourselves or whoever else we may come across in our day-to-day -day lives. And finally, at our heart sense, we remind ourselves to have clear and loving and honest intentions for whatever it is we plan for today, this week, this month, or the foreseeable futures of our lives. Folding forward down over the legs, look us on the stars you can ever to. May all beings be happy and free. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Namaste. Thank you all for joining me for this evening's yoga.